Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the notes on function composition. At the end of this, you should be able to say, I can write functions that describe the relationship between two quantities, and I can explore the composition of two functions through real, real world scenarios. All right, so first things first, what is a function composition? Function composition is applying one function to the results of another function, okay? Um, and it just so happens that the range of the first function becomes the domain of the second function. Okay, uh, we'll explore that in a little bit. Um, but let's let's do this to help you understand that. Let's take a look, look at some examples here, and that will help us with function composition. So, we've got f of x equals 3x minus 2 and g of x equals negative x plus 7. Now this says find f of g of 3. Okay, so what we uh, got to do here, just like normally in math, we take the innermost parentheses and we work on those first. Three, there's nothing to do with that. But then the next thing we have is g of three. So what we really want to do here is we can do our little function machine thing here. And we can do, say, we're going to plug in three goes in to the g machine. And g is negative x plus seven. Okay, so this 3 goes in and always replaces all the x's, so that's really negative 3 plus 7, right? Which, if you take negative 3 and you add 7 to that, we get 4. So 4 comes out of the g of 3 machine, so this g of 3 is really just 4. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to plug 4 into the f machine. So now this 4 goes straight into another machine here, which is the... F machine, right? So F is 3x minus 2, right? And so this 4 comes in, and that's what's going to go into this next machine here and uh, plugs in for all the x's. So 3 times 4 minus 2. 3 times 4 is 12 minus 2, right? So we end up coming out of this one. 12 minus 2 gives us 10. So F of G of 3 equals 10, okay? Now, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to do it the other way around, because now it says we're going to do the first thing we're going to do is f of 3, and then take the g of that result, put that into the g machine. So let's see if we can't squeeze these into a couple um, top to bottom here. Okay, so this 3 is going to go in here into the top of this first machine, and then it's the f of 3. So f is 3x minus 2. Okay, so this 3 goes in for that, that x right there. So 3 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 3 is 9. Right, so we get 9 minus 2. So out of that comes 7. Okay, and then, again, this kind of kind of bleed into this next problem down here, but that's okay. We'll make it work. So now straight out of that one goes now into the G machine, right? Because F of 3, we now know is 7. So really, we're taking this F of 3 out, and we're, we say, hey, we know that that's going to equal 7. So now we're going to do G of 7, right? So the G machine, in this case here, is negative X plus 7, negative X plus 7. So 7 goes in for the, the X here, so we get negative 7 plus 7, and negative 7, and positive 7 gives us 0. So g of f of 3 equals 0. So note that it's different depending on which machine comes first. So when it was g of 3, and then the f of g of 3, that gave us 10. When it was the other way around, f of 3, and then g of the f of 3 gave us 0. So it gives us different answers depending on which direction that goes in. All right, sorry, which one's first? Okay, so C, find F of G of X. So this one doesn't, you're not even plugging in um, numbers, we're just plugging in the X, okay? So really, in a lot of ways, this is a little bit easier because we already know what G of X equals, right? G of X is simply negative X plus seven, so that's what's gonna go in, negative X, plus 7 is going to go into the F machine. So the F is 3x minus 2. 3x minus 2. So this negative x plus 7 goes in for this x right here. 
So now we go 3 times negative x plus 7 minus 2. Right, so we distribute this 3 to both parts here. 3 times negative x is negative 3x. 3 times 7 is 21. And then minus 2 there. So then what comes out of that is negative 3x. And then 21 minus 2 is plus 19. Okay, so that's what f of g of x is. Okay, now <clears throat> something that could be significant to this is really if we wanted to plug 3 into the f of g, we want to find f of g of 3, we plug 3 into the g machine and take that result and plug it into the f machine, should end up being the same thing as plugging it into this composition of functions right here. So really if we do, now if it's not asking us to, but just kind of showing you um, how this whole composing functions uh, thing works here. We've actually got negative 3x plus 19. And now let's try plugging 3 into that. Negative 3 times 3 plus 19. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 19. Guess what that gives us? Gives us 10, which is the exact same thing as what we got up here. Okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense as to you can actually combine these two functions first and then you can start plugging stuff in makes it makes you don't have to plug it into two different uh, functions. So if if you have to do this a bunch of times, it's better to just compose these two functions together, come up with your new function and then plug your values into that new function. Okay? So really quick, let's find g of f of x. So on this one here, we're going to plug f of x, which is 3x minus 2, is going to go into the g machine, and g is negative x plus 7. Right, so this 3x minus 2 goes in for this x here, so it's negative 3x minus 2 plus 7. Distribute that negative to both parts here. We get negative 3x, negative times negative is plus 2, plus 7, so composition of this function here is going to be negative 3x plus 9. Okay. Now, again, if we were to plug 0, sorry, plug 3 into this composition here, negative 3 times 3 is not negative 9, negative 9 plus 9 is 0, and that's exactly what we get when we plug it into both of those. Okay. Alright, we're going to do one last set of examples here, but before we do that, let's take a quick little comedy break. All right, um, Sheila is a beard artist. She puts in beard extensions for $20 flat fee plus $90 an hour for labor. It takes Sheila about five minutes per lock of hair extension. Um, a, write a function for the overall cost of beard extensions where C is the cost and H is the number of hours. So our cost is gonna equal, she uh, asked for 20 bucks up front just to, you know, probably for like, uh, like driving there or, or you know whatever for some, some kind of supplies or whatever so um oops not 10 but 20 right so she's got 20 dollars and then plus another 90 dollars per hour so 90 times h so like if she worked five hours 90 times five plus 20 that's how much she would um that's how much it would cost for her to put in the beard extensions okay B, write a function for the hours H takes for each beard extension E to be put in. Okay, so it says five minutes per lock of hair extension, beard extension, really. But um, So think about it. it, takes five minutes, right? So five minutes, and there is 60 minutes in every hour, right? So if we do five over 60, that reduces down to one 
twelfth. Okay, so it takes her one twelfth of an hour per extension, right? Extension. Okay, something like that. So um, it says write a function for the hours it takes for each beard extension to be put in. Okay, so so we can do the hours is going to be it gets one twelfth per extension. Okay, so it takes one twelfth of an hour per extension um, to uh, well it takes one twelfth of an hour for each extension to be put in. Okay. So what we got to do for this one here is, look, we've got C equals 90H plus 20. We now know that H is 1 12th E, right? So we're just going to take that, plug that in right there. And so we get cost is going to be 90 times 1 12th E. That's an E there. It doesn't look like an E. Plus 20. So if we simplify that there, really what we're doing is we're going to take 90 times 1 is 90 and then divide that by 12. Okay, so 90 divide that by 12 gives us 7.5. So cost is going to be 7.5 times E plus 20. So really what that can mean here is it's going to, just so you kind of get an idea, it's going to cost $20 plus $7.50 per extension. Okay? So how much is it going to cost for 18 extensions? So if we do that, we're simply just going to plug in C equals 7.5 times 18 plus 20. Right? And then for 30 extensions, we'll do the same thing with instead of 18, it's going to be 30. Right? So C equals 7.5 times 30 plus 20. So again, we can do that on our... Oops, calculators here. Trying to get rid of that other stuff. There we go. So 7.5 times 18 plus 20 gives us a total of 155 bucks for um, 30 of these. So uh, C equals 155 bucks for 18 of them. And then on this one here, we can actually do this little trick here, push enter, and then I can actually just go through here and edit. If it actually moves, it doesn't look like it wants to, it's frozen on me. Hold on a second. All right, let's just enter it back in, 7.5, oops, missed the point, 0.5 times 30 plus 20. Okay, that's going to be $245, okay? 245 Now, it says, how many extensions could someone get for $100? So now, that 100 is, we're going to keep using our same function that we have here, but now we're going to plug 100 in for the C. So now that's what we're going to do. I'm going to actually do it over here where we've got some room. 100 is going to be the cost, 7.5 times the extensions plus 20. Now we're just going to solve for E. So subtract 20 from both sides. And we get 7.5e equals 80. So we want to divide by 7.5, both sides. And that'll tell us how many extensions we can get. So 80 divided by 7.5 gives us 10.6. So you can't get, you know, two-thirds of an extension. So um, we get 10.67. So that means we can get 10 extensions, 10 beard extensions for 100 bucks, right? Okay, um, that's all we have for function composition. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks.